Excellency President Putin, Your Excellency President Xi, Your Excellency President Rousseff, Your Excellency Prime Minister Modi, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, in this historic year of celebrating the 70th anniversary of the end of the Second World War and the creation of the United Nations, South Africa remains beholden to the important role that the United Nations played in ending apartheid in South Africa. <clears throat> As South Africans, we also celebrate this year the 60th anniversary of the adoption of the Freedom Charter, the foundation of our modern constitutional democracy. In the context of peace and security, we have witnessed over the past two decades the emergence of complex new threats that are interconnected, multidimensional, and transboundary as manifested in phenomena such as international terrorism and transnational organized crime. These new threats have radically challenged the traditional discourse on international law and security. The, national, <clears throat> the nature of these threats, coupled with resource limitations, requires BRICS partners to work more closely together, notably in the context of the United Nations and relevant regional bodies. <clears throat> Our national security advisors met recently and discussed cooperation on counterterrorism and violent extremism. Our relevant ministers also discussed the increased use of illicit drugs as a funding mechanism for the former and I therefore welcome the protocol on anti-drug cooperation that was signed. When we consider that two-thirds of the world's population still does not enjoy access to the Internet, it should be our shared goal to give people the power to transform their lives and benefit from all positive opportunities that the online would offer, <clears throat> that is, the world offers. We support, we support the early adoption of rules, norms, and principles of responsible behavior on the Internet. We recognize the involvement of all stakeholders in terms of the Tunis Agenda 2005, as well as consider the sovereign rights of nation states in this regard. We recognize the need to deal with related crimes through a universal regulatory and binding instrument under United Nations auspices. South Africa was most appreciative for the solidarity we received from our BRICS partners for the recent tragic events in the Mediterranean regarding migrants from the African continent and the Middle East. The South African government is putting various 
initiatives in place in order to deal with the migration use migration issues and welcome exchanges with the BRICS partners in this regard. We congratulate our chairperson on the successful completion and our adoption of the strategy for BRICS economic partnership, which will provide a platform for further intensifying our economic cooperation in all identified priority sectors. South Africa is eagerly looking forward to working together with our fellow BRICS countries to implement the strategy for the benefit of our people. We also appreciate <clears throat> the recent meetings that our chairperson organized and further encourage our parliamentarians, academics, business people, members of our civil societies, and youth to continue strengthening their ties and exchanges and acknowledge their contributions. This is indeed a historic year where our intergovernmental agreements on the new development bank and contingent reserve arrangement entered into force. We wish to assure our partners as well as the new president of the bank, Mr. K.V. Kamath, and his fellow vice presidents, including our own Mr. Leslie Masodorp, of our unwavering support for this endeavor. We also welcome the appointment of the non-executive directors, including our own Mr. Tito Mboweni. Since we joined the BRICS in Sanya, our trade has expanded exponentially, and we witnessed impressive growth indicative of the continuous integration of our economies. Both South Africa and the African continent have benefited from our economic cooperation with our BRICS partners. South Africa's total trade with BRICS in 2011 was 268 billion rand and has since grown to 382 billion rand in 2014, an increase of 70 percent. BRICS total trade with Africa doubled since 2007 to 340 billion US dollars in 2012 and is projected to reach 500 billion US dollars by 2015. In addition to 2015 being the 70th anniversary of the United Nations, it is also the year in which a number of significant development processes is taking place. These include the intergovernmental negotiations on the post-2015 development agenda, the third international conference on financing for development, as well as the 2015 Paris Climate Conference known as COP21 later this year. As BRICS partners, 
we should strive to enhance our coordination and coherence on these issues. The overarching triple challenge, challenges of poverty, inequality, and unemployment continue to inhibit global development. If we as member states of the United Nations do not deal comprehensively with the scourge of poverty, underdevelopment, and disease, the poor of the world will consider that the UN has failed them. Thus, South Africa, in its capacity as the current chair of the group of 77 and China, will be working closely with all UN member states towards a global development agenda in which the eradication of poverty and the noble millennium development goals remains our collective focus and are addressed. For the BRICS members, the adoption of an ambitious global development agenda will most certainly also provide us with new opportunities for cooperation in ensuring the implementation of the agreed global development goals. I thank you, <clears throat> Your Excellency Chair. India is the new frontier of oppor opportunities for the world. Central Asia is a vast region of immense resources, talented people, rapid growth, and a strategic location. So, I'm here to start a new era in our relationship with Central Asia.